Attention pro athletes. Want to secure your financial legacy and thrive off the field? Oak Bridge Wealth Management, led by wealth manager Chris Anasetti, is your dedicated financial planning ally. But don't take it from me. Take it from the Dallas Cowboys, Tyler Biotish. He says, Chris set goals financially and has been incredibly impactful in my journey in the NFL. Experience our customized, comprehensive approach, trusted by top NFL players. Don't leave your financial success to chance. Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anaceti. That's OakbridgeWM underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And let Oakbridge Wealth Management guide you across the goal line. Welcome back to Believe in Badgers on the Believe Network, presented by BetOnline.ag and Oak Bridge Wealth Management. Once again, I'm Matt Perkins, joined, as always, by Badger legend, the Hebrew Hammer himself, Matt Bernstein. Bernie, how are we doing today? Dude, every day's a holiday. We're in the midst of a toddler meltdown, and as you can hear, here it is. I could have one coming at any here time. Here we go. We got a... a hey... We got a. We might have a guest appearance of someone very upset by a change in schedule. She wants to be on air. All right, come here, Maple. You can make it up. Come here. Come here. Take a chill. Let's go, Maple. Let's go, Maple. While Maple comes and says hi, uh, I mean, you know who it is. The best friend of the pod, Clint Cosgrove. Uh, we're back for parts four and five of the special. Maple. Hello, Maple. Hi, Maple. Good evening, Miss Maple. So and welcome we, uh, to your debut. Welcome, yes, welcome to your show debut. We've uh, your wife's been on the show talking with uh, Nigel Hayes before. So now we my get, middle school uh, friend. Yes, your middle school friend. We're all connected a little bit too much these days. I know. Um, <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, uh, before we get into it, want to remind everyone tuning in that we are presented by BetOnline.ag, where they continue to be your number one source for all of your online sports wagering needs. You name it, they've got it over there at betonline.ag. Head on over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit with our promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-V. Bet online where the game starts. All right, like I said before, we are here for part four of our five-part scouting megapod with uh, the tape guru himself, Clint Cosgrove. And Clint, uh, today... Uh, on our penultimate version, we are going to look at the transfer non-linebackers. We have so many freaking linebackers in this transfer class that we have to have a linebacker-only show. So today, we've got, we've got everyone but the linebackers. It's called the ABL podcast. And uh, we're going to start our ABL podcast with the most pos- important position on the field, and that is quarterback, uh, where the Badgers landed former four-star prep recruit, Tyler Van Dyke out of Miami and he he's he's different from Tanner Mordecai in enough yeah. ways that you will notice a difference on the field but I think there actually are some similarities uh some more, more than people want to necessarily think because I think that Tyler Van Dyke is not a statue like a lot of people seem to want to accuse him of being And you're going to see it on the film here. I mean, TVD, he can do a little bit of everything. Deep ball, you see it here. Touch passes. You know, he's got a little cowboy to him, and you love that. Uh, Sometimes as a a coach, it can get you a little upset because they make some bad decisions. But you need a little cowboy if you're going to go for it all, and he's got that. Um, You know, he's got a little unorthodox throwing motion. Um, I'm not going to say I love it, but he's – extremely efficient and there are times when i do love it because he can alter his release and he's very efficient in doing so like you see right there um he's not a statue okay uh he's able to do a little bit of everything like i said those who say he can't run you know like that third clip showed he's more than serviceable and he is enough of a threat to make you account for him as a defensive coordinator. Right? So they're going to scheme up ways to make you have to account for him as a DC. You always have to keep that in your mind because it dictates your coverages. It dictates an extra hitter and you no longer have that extra hitter. 
when you're calling plays. Okay. It's truly 11 on 11. You know, if you have a statue of a quarterback, it is not 11 on 11. A lot of people think, and there he is again, look at him racing like a racehorse. Don't tell me TVD can't run. Okay. Um, but no, they'll scheme it up. They may, they're going to hold defenses accountable and it dictates anything from your coverages to your run fits and everything. Okay. There's a great example of that altered release. He throws up the jump ball. There's the cowboy. Um, you know, I just, people weren't over the top excited when they heard about it. I was over the top excited for Wisconsin. When I heard about it, you see that little touch pass right there. He has a big arm. You don't always see that just like we saw with uh, Mabry. You don't always see those guys able to make that throw. So he does a little bit of everything. What you're going to get out of him is you're now able to stretch a defense vertically before they were just kind of mishmashing and stretching it horizontally. If you can stretch a defense vertically, stretch them horizontally, you're putting a lot of stress on the players. You're using the entire field. Okay. So with the receivers coming in with his ability to take shots, his want to, to take shots, He's not afraid of getting hit. He'll stand in there, and he's going for the long ball. Chicks dig the long ball. Badger fans are going to dig the long ball. TVD has a chance to be a legend. He might, you know, have some bumps in the road. We've seen the development of Mordecai over the year. It takes some time to know this offense, but at the same time, he's running something very similar down at Miami. He's proven winner. He's done it against big time competition. I'm a big fan. Uh, you got to have a quarterback that takes chances. Hopefully, not too many picks, but uh, I think he makes the team better. What do you guys think? I, I mean, I completely, I completely agree. You know, we have to also put an asterisk on what the Badgers need the most tomorrow to start winning big time football games, and that's quarterback right now. Right? We had. Um, Tanner for one year and we're going to have Tyler for one year. And we're, the, I, th I think the reason is we need to mold Mabry to be that guy. And it's going to take a year, right? It, it, we, everyone yeah. is going out and getting quarterbacks on every level, transfer portal, um, recruiting. It's just what the game is now. And I think Tyler brings, first off, he sees the field. Well, he can make, he can get out of the pocket. He can run. I'm not a huge quarterback running fan. I just don't like it. I, those guys take hits that they don't need to take, but he's, I like the cowboy. Like let's throw it up and let our dudes who I think are really good, go get it. Yeah. But I, we have to also, you know, the, the reason is they have a ton of linebackers in the transfer portal. They've seen things and they're waiting for their recruiting class and the culture that they're building to come to, to come to fruition, but it doesn't happen overnight when you're recruiting. Number one is recruiting. Tyler Van Dyke's going to be a, a stud here next year, but he's a one-year guy. I wish he was longer, but he's a one-year guy. So we're filling holes that we know we need to fill to win football games and to be successful, but at, at the same time, grooming our younger guys to be the next dudes, to get a culture where we don't have to go to the transfer portal for 20, what do we have, 11, 12, 13 guys, and last year we had a ton. You know, I don't think that's what we're building towards. I think it's no. to, to just plug – little teeny leaks that are happening yeah you, you don't see the discrepancies between you you know if you are someone who looks at the rankings right of of classes and how they're graded out you saw with like uh when michigan state had their one mm -hmm. year under mel tucker they had a huge they had a great transfer class but they had crap recruiting behind it right there wasn't much there in terms of like actual prep recruiting and you saw them fall off and we've seen this happen with other programs who have prioritized the portal. And so I don't think you're going to see that here, but I do understand, like, I think that there is trying to like build up a, a base of people, at least that will sort of be more in line with their vision of what a college fo football roster looks like. Um, and I think for them, like they needed a veteran presence at quarterback. And my sort of biggest point for optimism here would be that when Van Dyke was a first year starter, under uh Rhett Lashley as his offensive coordinator and Rhett Lashley's offense is the most similar to that of Phil Longo's of the three that he played in as his three years of, as a starter at Miami right and so I think those skills translate and now I don't love the fact that he's on his fourth offense in four years I think that's a lot for a professional quarterback much less a college like quarterback it. right so what do you like about that though? You don't think you think that just that's just more knowledge for them to have or what? 
Yeah, so you bank all this stuff along the way, right? So even though you're learning all these different offenses, there's a lot of concept carryover, okay? So he's basically experienced and had game situations, actual action, using pretty much every concept that you're going to find in every offense. So he knows how to make those reads already. This isn't like, okay, we're starting from day one. We're teaching you how to make this read in this concept. He's done it before. And he doesn't have to bank all that energy and all that verbiage. He just has to come in and learn the new verbiage and then carry that knowledge that he has. And that is, that's something that gets ingrained in your brain. Okay. So like these reads, they, those take reps. And we saw it this year at the end of the year against, uh, against LSU, the reps weren't thoughts. All of a sudden they're reactions. So those reactions are embedded in him. Those are part of his body mechanics. Those are part of the way he sees the field. And so he can ditch the nonsense that he doesn't need, focus on the new concepts, focus on the new terminology, and he has game experience executing them. So to me, I think it's huge. And it means he's adaptable as well. He hasn't been put in the best situation to succeed over three years. So we probably haven't seen the best of him. But at the same time, he's made the most of his situation and he has game reps doing just about everything that you can ask from a quarterback in any offense. He can get rid of the noise, focus on what's important here. And I think it, it's actually an asset, in my opinion. Yeah, and I'll piggyback on that. I, I th First off, he can make the throw right as a quarterback. And he made the throw in college at a big time university. You know, he's not some dude making big throws. I don't know, playing against, you know, Edgewood or I don't know. What do we used to say? Like sisters of the blind, like this dude played sisters at a high level right down the street from my house. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he can do it. And then, uh, and what we're, what we're excited about and why we probably took him was he has the knowledge in an offense type like this and he can make the throw, right? His skill set is there. So you're right. All he has to do is learn this new stuff, but he's going to throw it to a place that dudes are going to get it. And, and I think. Have, uh, no, I didn't mean to yeah, cut you off, Bernie. No, I'm no, saying, no, like, please, you're not please. tinkering with mechanics or anything like that. You're having a guy come in and it's like, he is what he is. We're not going to alter anything about him. We're just going to put him on the field. Let him show the younger guys the way. Let him be a cowboy. I mean, this guy's going to have fun at the KK on Saturday nights, you know, and, and there's no doubt about it. South beach to state street. Okay. It doesn't get any, any better than that. Very similar, just very different at the same time. Uh, two places you want to go. If you are interested in the nightlife. Um, I don't know if our next player is interested in the nightlife, but uh, I imagine coming from Norman, Oklahoma, it will be greatly improved. Uh, that, that's not a diss to Norman, Oklahoma. It's just Madison's better. Um, Nonetheless, uh, Tawi Walker is a uh, is stout. I should I think I think is the best uh, is adjective stout. that I have to describe him. He's stout. He is thick with two C's, um, and he adds a veteran presence to the running back room that really needed one with just Ches Malusi as an upperclassman coming back, and Ches um, is you know uh, he's working his way back from injury again. Um, you know, they still have Jackson Aker, the converted fullback who saw a fair bit of time this year, but they don't really have a lot of proven guys in there. And so I think what was pretty clear to me was that uh, Phil Longo wanted to add, you know, someone with a, a veteran presence to the room, Clint. Yeah, I mean, that's the number one thing that I'd say. Uh, veteran presence, okay? Runs with the low center of gravity, has great feet, love his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. That's something that we haven't seen a ton of, and it's something that's important in this offense. It keeps you, as a defensive coordinator, as a defensive scheme, it, it, you know, it keeps you accountable. You always have to account for that. So he could be an extra blocker, uh, obviously, and he's going to be asked to do that a lot. He's stout, thick with two Cs, like you said. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's something that you need in this offense, even if the ball's coming out quick. And then also he's going to be a guy who they can count on to block, and all of a sudden he can release and, and get to the open field. So ball skills are huge. He's, uh, I don't think he's a guy that's going to run for 2,000 yards but i think he's a guy who adds value to the offense you see him kind of with that downhill running style i don't want to tackle him i don't want to tackle anybody as i've made it clear many times um but 
you know, he 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 does he makes the most out of his skill set, and I think that veteran presence is so important. Uh, and, and Bernie, you know how it is, like you know, with AD, you know, in, in the room, when those guys are waiting their turn, they saw the older guys, you know, it was Ron Dane and then Michael Bennett, you know, they saw those guys and the guys waited their turn. And there was never without a doubt, the next guy always succeeded. And it's because the guy in front of them, whether they were the most talented guy in the world or overachieved, you know, it, it, as a big 10 running back, you know, from you to, to Calhoun, to all these guys, they learn from the guys in front of them. And obviously they were coached well, but you've got to have a presence in that room. This guy comes from a blue blood program. He's a proven guy who has, who has made plays, very productive, has seen a lot of reps, has seen a little bit of everything, kind of like you say with TVD. Um, you know, I, he's, you know, he's not going to change the program, but I think he is a big addition. And I think he improves the team merely by his presence, but he's able to play right away. We have no question about that. He's going to be productive. He's going to do things that you're going to need and that might not have had, especially from a veteran who you can count on when, when the, the game's on the line, you need two yards or you're coming out of the end zone. Like we saw in that early clip that you can hand the ball to him and not worry about him screwing up. The stage isn't going to be too big for him. Now, some of these younger guys coming in that might be a little more talented, that stage takes a minute to adjust to. There's that moment where it's like, I don't even feel like I should be out here. This is easier than I thought it would be. And you're not worried about anything. And then you get to the point where once you're in it, you're like, oh God, I'm going to screw up at some point. These guys have been through that. And you know how it is, Bernie. You, you've been there. Like, I remember when you were the dude, you had to come in and carry the ball like 30 freaking times. I remember watching it on TV. And I was like, don't tell me that you're going to bring down this horse. He's going to take the life out of you. This guy's going to teach those guys how to do it. He's an asset to the team. He can contribute right away. I think it's a good pickup. And I also, listen, I'm a big Jackson Acre fan after the bowl game. The guy looks like he lost oh, a bunch yeah. of weight. He went from a fullback to, I think, to now a true tailback. He steps in there and he blocks. I think you're looking at, could he be the, a starter? He he might be. I'm in, I'm interested to see how he progresses because from what I saw from the last game of the season to the bowl game, he was a different player. I like Yacomelli, but I think these guys are backup guys. I have not. I think they're good. They're good players and role players. But we don't have once Ches went down and once Braylon got hurt, or I mean, they didn't play in the in the in in the what's it called the the bowl game we really don't have depth at that position and again what i think is happening with the transfer portals we're building that culture but it can't happen within a year or two you literally have to recruit these dudes we have three freshmen coming in but there has to be clint like you're saying some guys with some experience to help them out and to also handle the load until they're ready right like these guys i, I love this dude i think he's going to be awesome for us next year well, I mean, he catches, it takes he runs. a village in the backfield. You got to have a bunch of it guys. A There's a reason that there aren't first round draft picks at running back outside of this year. When you got a guy like Bijan, like not one guy can take the load anymore. It's different than when we played. It's different. And the NFL's game. changed. To, yeah. Totally. And the NFL's changed where you have three or four running backs. Yep. And so that's what we're looking at in college. And you need three or four guys. And if one gets hurt, you cannot have a drop off to go to a fullback. And I think Jackson Aker took – I think he did a great job at the role, and I think his improvement has been huge. And I'm very excited to have him in the backfield as well. Two yards, that dude's going to get it. But I think what we're doing and what we're building, we're getting the right guys. This guy played in a top-10 team, and he was productive. So, again, his skill set's there, and he just – he's going to come in and be able to literally give him the ball and run downhill without really doing a lot of coaching. What I also – think is important about this addition is the fact that you know with Chez injured they had like no one really available this spring like they need physical bodies in the room one of their three tailbacks from the coveted prep tail class that we covered back in episode one of uh, our scouting megapod one of those three guys Gideon Atuka is enrolling early but that leaves him Nate White uh the true freshman from this year uh, Yacomelli and Acre as the only scholarship backs and none of them are you know real truly you know proven veterans by you know uh, m most measurements and so you need someone yeah. who's been there and done that and I think it's a 
you know, I, I think it's a really nice addition for the Badgers. And I think also he's someone who's going to be able to contribute as a third down back, you know, despite his, you know, uh, you know, stocky uh, stature, his, his stockiness. He's actually a pretty good pass catcher out of the backfield. He's an amazing pass catcher. Yeah, I love that about him. Soft hands, very soft hands. So I'm excited about that. Um, one other, uh, speaking of pass catchers, let's head on over to the receiver. Uh, that's Tyrell uh, Henry out of Michigan State. He's got two years of eligibility left. And, uh, you know, at Michigan State, he uh, played pretty much exclusively out of the slot, but he's very good at that, Clint. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he had like 24 catches this year, had a few touchdowns. Um, you know, the thing, and I really liked him coming out of high school. So I'm pretty sure he went to the same high school that Amari Snowden uh, played at, uh, I believe, Roseville. Um Correct. And I loved this kid coming out of high school. He's different than what you have. Okay. So um, he might look the same in a lot of ways, you know, to, to some of the guys that they have out there, but his route running style, his ability to get vertical and get to a spot, he just does it differently. And to me, that is important. He's long and wiry. Um, you know, he, he does look like Pauling at first glance, but he's he's a change up. You know, you think of like Kyan Barry Jans- Johnson working dudes, you know, like running these polished routes where he's going to make them, you know, trip over their feet and get open. This guy gets to a point. So he might be running the same route as Pauling, the same route as Kyan Barry Johnson. But you'll see here, like those quick outs, he's getting to the same point doing the same thing, but doing it differently. So as a defensive back, as I'm trying to prepare for that, I'm reading body language. And I, all of a sudden, there is another fold to my coverage responsibility. Yes, I have my role within the scheme, but each player you're covering, when when all the receivers are the same, you don't have to change a lot up. He's a change of pace. And that can really throw you off as a DB. Like I said, Kyan Barry Johnson, maybe he's running a five yard out where he's getting down and shaking and in and out of that break and the defensive backs coming to, you know, coming to balance and then trying to break on it where this kid's just going boom. Now it's the same route, the same concept, but he's doing it differently. Okay, so you can attack areas, confuse defensive backs, not let them get comfortable. And that's what I like about him. He's done it in the Big Ten. I think his best football is in front of him. I, I absolutely loved him coming out of high school. He's still pretty thin, I think. Uh, I think in this strength program, he can definitely develop a lot. Um, so, and, and we need receivers. Wisconsin needs receivers. Um, and I, I just think it's a great addition. You know, is he going to catch for 3,000 yards and get 100 balls? Probably not. But we have, as a group, Wisconsin has, as a group, enough guys. And then you throw in the change-ups, like to me, as a defensive back, as somebody who covered guys, as somebody who coached secondary, as you're sitting down there breaking down the film, when you get to the real nuances as the great players do, and you're breaking down body language and you're used to covering a guy because he's not a guy that they're going to travel with. Like one defensive back isn't going to travel with them all game, right? So defensive backs are going to have to cover these other guys who run routes differently, maybe the same route, like I've said a hundred times, but you have to adjust to the way they run it. And it just changes everything. So guys are going to have to be comfortable being uncomfortable while covering all these different types of route runners. And uh, I think it just adds a different dynamic to the offense. Much needed player. Uh, a lot of upside. Still has two years. I like it. In 2024, do you still need to have the definitive X body type, definitive Z body type, definitive slot body type, or... Because in at least it seems like to my much less trained eye than your two uh, that the body types don't matter as much in this day and age so much as can they get where they need to go in the amount of time needed to get there, no matter what they look like. Like, I don't see like every X receiver isn't six, five anymore. Right. Nope. Like it seemed like for a while, like every team had to have one guy who was six, five two twenty, but it, it just doesn't seem like that exists anymore, especially in this this Longo offense that wants to be more up tempo, that wants to move quickly. Like you have a lot of smaller bodies out there at receiver. It's okay, and, and I said that in my review after the LSU game. A lot of people are like, "We don't have that big X." Well, one, those guys are hard to find. Okay, a six five, two hundred and thirty five pound guy who runs, you know. 10, four in the hundred, four, four, like, you know, they're, they're not coming from Wisconsin very often. They can. 
We saw one from Nebraska and Malachi Coleman last year, you know, so those potty types are in the Midwest, but those guys are just hard to get, you know, and we're moving into a positionless level of football. I kind of love, you know, back in the day, it was like positionless guys. They took a hit on the recruiting trail. And these are a lot of time the guys who overachieved once they got to the college level, because as a coach, when you're recruiting, you're like, I only get three players at my position. This dude better end up playing my position. Otherwise, I lose a guy. OK, as it becomes more positionless, there's a lot less like, well, he's got to fit this mold and do this exact same thing. We saw in the bowl game, you can run switch routes and hit vertical. You can do it. You don't need a six, five guy in order to do that. Would you like to have one? Sure. We all would. I would like to have, uh, you know, a, I don't know, a six, five best friend who made a lot of money and wanted me to train him and coach him. You know, I, I just don't have it, you know, and not a lot of people do. And so uh, you in this offense, in this day and age of football, these guys become positionless. You find ways to manufacture ways to stretch the field, like I said earlier, and uh, you, you don't need the 6'5 guy. You want it, yeah, but it's not necessary. You look, we had Darren Charles, who was like 6'6", six, six, but he wasn't an, six, an X. Six, yeah. No. 6'7", whatever he was. And then you had, you know, you had Lee Evans, who was that dude, but he was like 6'1". And then you had no, Brandon Williams. he was Williams, 5'11", was, I think. Yeah. Yeah, 5'11". Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know. I just look eye to eye to him. So I just assumed he was six one. And then you had Brandon Williams, who was a guy who was, you know, okay. J.O. was six, six feet. So, I mean, like, I'm just talking about Badger guys like Jared yeah. Everdeus, not six, five. What is he? Six, two. So like, you do have, six, you're, six, you're right. Though, you, yeah. you get these dudes now. Look at, um, who do we have on the show? Erickson. Like, you mm -hmm. got guys who are just going to ball out. They're not typical Calvin Johnson, you know, transformers these are dudes yeah. who are just going to work their butts off and make catches and and be great and i think that's okay there's great x receivers that are six one i mean chris chambers was that six one six two mm -hmm. um yeah. you know lee evans played all the spots he could line up on the outside like you're not going to body sure. him at the line of scrimmage you know strength and power and speed like those th those can overcome size especially if you have an incredible catch radius yeah, and if if you can get off if you can get off press coverage at the line, doesn't matter how you know if you're five nine or six nine, like you can get off press coverage. Like that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Um, so let's move a little bit closer in line to uh, tight end. Uh, the Badgers picked up an Ohio native who spent uh, last year down at LSU. It's uh, Jackson McGowan. So this is his high school tape that we have here. We've watched college tape, but this is his high school tape because he didn't really uh, see the field much at LSU last year. But mm, uh, he's moss. a kid who has a uh, uh, pretty solid upside as especially a receiving tight and Clint. And, you know, I know he was someone that was in your in your in your coverage territory so uh what do you like here what do you see here uh on the tape usually when you start out saying a kid's a phenomenal kid it's because they're not a great football player but i want to start with saying jackson is a phenomenal kid i love this kid he was at our camp um he, he was great okay so i'm going to start with that because that is important when you're also a great football player you know, you, you don't want to lead with he's a great kid because it usually means they're not a great football player. He's a great football player. He's got a ton of upside. Now, the thing with him, and I think he was committed to Cincinnati originally before he flipped to LSU. And so, again, Cincinnati and this staff doing great job evaluating. Now he was an Ohio kid. Um, but he's a, you know, it's just hard to explain what makes him special because he's not 6'7". He doesn't run 4'3". His best trait is he's a football player. OK, he's got phenomenal ball skills, especially for a tight end, as we saw. OK, he catches contested balls, very versatile skill set. There's a lot of things he can do. He can be your jumbo slot, uh, you know, Perko. He, he, he's a perfect example of a jumbo slot guy. Love he's a good jumbo like, slot. I know you do. And uh, and you're getting that in him. But he's also a pass catcher. So I don't know how much he weighs right now. Um, he was a pretty thick kid coming out of high school. He's and, listed he, uh, 235. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, he's a guy who can hold 250. And when he was at our camp, it was one of those things. It's like he didn't wow you in any specific way, kind of like I talked about earlier, but people couldn't guard him. He does a great <laughs> job of tracking the ball. He adjusts to the ball uh, in the air. He makes the contested catches. And, like, 
as a tight end, a guy who reliability and what you want, like he has those traits. He's going to catch the ball in space, but he's going to catch it over the middle. He'll take a hit. He can be, you know, he can out jump. You see him line up on the outside like a receiver, but he is built like a tight end. And so he's just one of those guys, his best traits of football player, immediate, immediate, immediate upgrade at the position. Love him as a kid. Love him as a player. Think he has a ton of upside. I, I think this is a big win right here. I, I mean, I completely agree. I think, again, when you look at the offense, this is a position that we need dudes at. And um, we recruited two young guys. You know, you don't know if they're ready. Like, Clint, you were blowing me up, which I appreciate. But I was a literal fagawi when I showed up. Like, I couldn't figure – we have, I, I can I'll explain what a Figawi is, but it's basically someone who is, walks around the desert and has no idea where they are. And they basically say, where the f- are we? They're a Figawi. So we used to call people in high school that. So I love you Figawi know, you know, Bernie. It's a great, it's a, it's a great word. Figawi Jabroni. But I was a Figawi Jabroni. Jabroni. Like, dude, I was so, – so, so to bring it back is you have these two young guys who I think can do, will do it, right? But it's always nice to have a dude who has some experience – the room needs a little bit of help, and it doesn't – listen, competition is healthy. You know, all these guys are going to get – it's going to help Tucker Ashcraft. It's going to help all these guys. They need it too. So I think when you're also looking, if you have guys who can do multiple things, you can put in 13 personnel. Now you're playing a whole different ball game with 13 personnel is one back, three tight ends. You're now playing a whole different ball game with all dudes who can be receivers. I mean, it – it does elevate the offense. So I do think all these guys are going to play, but I agree. This dude's a game changer, and we need a guy who can go up and just get the ball, right? We need to throw it up to somebody and say, hey, dude, you just come down with it. And and that's from these clips, you know, it looks like he can be that guy. And that's exciting. But that room, along with the running backs and I think the quarterback room, also this is skill positions, right? Those are the rooms you need the dudes in. I mean, every position you really need the dudes in. But – we did. We were lacking with what Phil Longo's trying to do. The skills that match up those positions and what Coach Longo's trying to do, I don't think matched up perfectly. And I think bringing these guys in is a better mesh for what he's trying to accomplish on offense. And I think he can line up in the backfield too. If you need pass pro or a guy who can leak out, like he can do that too. Um, hit it, Perko. H back baby. No, again, I, I love Yakamelli and I love Jackson Aker to line up in the backfield of pass protect. Like those dudes to me have been proven well to do that. And they I'm just excited because those guys have, you know, they they understand what being a badger is. And you got some young dudes coming in. Those guys to me are what, you know, A D, Chad Coons, you know, Russ Coons, Jerome Pat, like these guys are Wisconsin, you know, like they love Wisconsin. You know, some weird dudes who were in that room when I got there that were like, you know, you're like, you're looking around. You're like, I don't know. These guys are going to be here. For, you know, like you, even as me, I'm like, I don't know. What's this guy doing here? But AD was upset. You know, he loved Wisconsin and he took everyone under their wing. No matter when we yeah. brought BC in, he didn't. He was like, dude, come on in, man. Like, let's be better. So I, I think that's AD. what Jackson and Giacomelli are going to do. And everyone's going to do it. So I, and I was a little bit of a. A a long-winded explanation. Attention athletes. Do you want a frictionless and tailored financial planning experience to secure your future? Well, look no further. Introducing Oak Bridge Wealth Management, the premier financial planning firm for professional athletes. Led by wealth manager Chris Anasetti, our team provides a unique and comprehensive approach, ensuring your financial success both on and off the field. We understand the unique challenges you face as a professional athlete, from managing cash flow habits to planning major business purchases and navigating complex contracts. That's why we've developed a proven process, working closely with our strategic partners to provide seamless solutions for your unique financial journey. Our services evolve with your career, offering short, mid, and long-term goal setting, portfolio optimization, real estate investments, and more. As you transition to life beyond the field, we support you with career development and philanthropic ventures. But don't just take our word for it. Top NFL players like Chase Roulier, 
Tyler Biotish, Alec Ingold, and more. Trust Oak Bridge Wealth Management to guide them towards financial success. Troy Dye of the Minnesota Vikings says, I really love the work that Chris and the rest of the Oak Bridge group do. I especially like the honesty and transparency when it comes to setting up financial goals and plans that best fit my needs and situation. It's time to elevate your financial game plan. Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anacete. That's OakbridgeWM underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And join the winning team. We are going to flip to the other side of the ball uh, and head straight to the, to the defensive backs, Clint's favorite position. Uh, Badgers have landed a nickel corner, uh, RJ Delancey, out of Toledo. He's got one year of eligibility remaining, but uh, I think he's going to slot right in where, where Maitre left off. Clint, this dude hits with uh, some serious force for a corner. Or just for yeah, a player I mean, in general, I should say, because he just hits. Yeah, he brings that Miami swag. Uh, originally from Florida, I think he signed with Nebraska. I don't know what happened there, but he ended up at Toledo. Uh, if I had to use, you know, kind of two themes for him, and you're going to see it in these clips right here. I mean, the guy is a ball disruptor, okay? He stays in phase, and you don't see a lot of guys that stay in phase and then also make a play on the ball. So he doesn't have a ton of picks, but he does intercept the ball, but the balls aren't getting caught that are thrown his way. So he does a great job staying in phase and then making a play in the ball. How many times do we see a guy who is in phase like that, but is not able to make the play? The guy still makes the catch because the guy can't make a play on the ball. He is a disruptor. And I absolutely love that about him. OK, so you're not going to pick on him. He's going to pick on you if you try to fall, throw the ball his way. Uh, you know, he's competitive as all get out. But then the other theme with him, like you said, Perko. Physical as hell. He plays bigger than he is. He's listed at six foot 180. I do not think he's six foot 180, but he hits like he's 6'2, 220. Okay. And a physical DB that can cover, stay in phase, disrupt the ball. You want those kids. He's smart. He's tough. He's dependable. He was an all academic Mac kid. Kid that when the ball is in the air, you're going to be able to count on him. He's going to pick things up. Uh, I, I'd imagine they they had a pretty good idea of who he was coming out of high school and then probably played against him at some point at Cincinnati. He played, he had a great run of three years um, when he was at Toledo. Uh, but just, you know, you love the, you love the tape, you love everything you know about him and look at the way he just last second looks for the ball. He finds a way to stay in phase. A lot of guys, they worry about the ball too much. All right. The ball is not the issue until the man is covered. Then the ball becomes the issue. He finds a way to make the man covered and then the ball becomes the issue and he's going to lay the wood if you try to cross his face love it i just love the reckless abandon and you can tell from the clips he loves playing football like he's yes. excited he's going to bring that emotion he's going to bring that energy to our defense i love it i mean he's you're right he is a ball disruptor i would like to see more interceptions because that is very Keep helpful moves, baby but um you know he's it looks like he's an inch away but the hitting did you get this dude? Like, you can't have enough nickel, guys, if you can get them because, you know, it's a, it's a highly uh, touted position. But a dude who can make tackles in the in the open field and then stick you, those dudes are scary going up against. E even for fullbacks, they're scary. And he's a vet. Yeah. And I, a vet. Think, I think that he is – uh, he, his body type A is different from Maitre, uh, who was who was pretty. Sh I mean, he was I think about five eight. Maitre was last year playing slot for the uh, for the Badgers, and he's a little bit longer. And I feel like if he if they do need someone to travel with a receiver, he has the ability to do that. And you know, he is six foot, and his you know he can hold up. I'm excited about this. I'm very excited about this. The Badgers didn't have a lot of guys. They don't have really any upperclassmen nickels at all. They pretty much had true freshman guys in the room right now, plus uh, Owen Arnett, who's, I think, like a third-year uh, PWO uh, on, on the team. So they were pretty thin at the nickel position. So I know that they, you know, Austin Brown, who's a safety, ended up starting at nickel in the bowl game against LSU. So they were really looking for a nickel. And I think they got a pretty good one here in Delancey. Um, one other uh, guy on the defensive side of the ball before we get to the linebackers is Elijah Hills at defensive tackle and Bernie uh, and Clint? 
I, you know, I think that a lot of people would New say York. this was the this was the position of most need for the Badgers uh, was defensive tackle because uh, the, the defensive line in general, but the defensive tackle position, especially, you know, uh, you know, they are very, very thin there. And so I think Hills uh, from Albany is a guy who can, you know, really step up and, and take control. Yeah, I don't know a ton about Albany. But I know these dudes can evaluate and they can recruit and they can develop guys. That Florida State edge, he was from Albany. The dude didn't Jared have Burst. any offers. He didn't even play until like a couple years in. This kid, same thing. They find these guys, they develop them. He's a disruptor at the line of scrimmage, okay? Um, you know, he's coming into his best football. He wasn't a dominant player until this year. I don't even know if he started every game until this year. And then all of a sudden, Albany's a top five team. This guy can change the line of scrimmage. He can he can take on double teams. He's explosive off the ball. You know, he, he's got a little, you see it there, he's got a little dancing bear to him, some interior pass rush ability. I don't know if that's what you, you recruited him for, but you recruited him to sit there, take up blocks, fight through, fight, get after people, get after that ASS and uh, move the line of scrimmage. And that's something that was missing. You need to move the line of scrimmage back. And then I mean, back into the backfield, not back into your own defensive backfield. And that is something that was missing. Um, his best football is in front of him. I think this kid is only scratching the surface of what he can be as a player. Uh, he's a little, I, I don't want to say he's physically limited, but he's not, you know, a Wendell Bryant type. This is a guy who's going to be physical. He's going to brawl when it's short yardage. He's going to fight your ass off. And then he's going to, you know, he's going to penetrate and make stops. And, and I love that about him. It's something that was needed. And he's a vet. And like I said, best football in front of him. This guy's only scratching the surface. He could make a real impact if everything comes to fruition right away. I love his quickness at the line of scrimmage. You know, he defeats blocks. I mean, he takes some chances, which, I think we might probably get coached out of him, but like he's able to defeat some blocks quickly at the line of scrimmage. And that is attractive because we did not do a great job of letting our dudes kind of do their thing. And this guy can do it. And he's a vet. And he plays for the great Danes, baby. The great, great Danes. Dane. The great Danes. And, and then you see that swim move, even though he gets high sometimes, like he's able to take that punch and that freaking hurts anybody who's, who's taken that, that hurts, but then get square and get lateral and make the play in the backfield. So even if he makes mistakes, even if he takes the little alley-oop, like he finds a way to make a play. He's, he's disruptive, explosive off of the ball. He shoots gaps. They need it. And it's annoying for O-linemen. And I think that's oh, yeah. huge in the three, three, just to annoy O-linemen, go in a gap, take it, suck it up have a guy trip over you because you randomly swim and he fell down. Like these are things we need, you know, like, yeah. Although coach Alvarez hated anytime somebody fell on the ground, like in a game, it's okay. When the O line falls down, that guy can't block anyone. He's a, you know, he's just a huge hole. Um, So I'm high on this guy. One, I, I mean, my dad went to Albany, so I'm like a little bit slighted, but two, you know, I think this guy could come in and make some things as Clint said, disrupt the line of scrimmage and, we need that. And, and just the swim move is so quick and you probably know what's going to happen and you still can't. It's like, um, who is that dude who, who rushed off the edge and did a spin move and he was unstoppable on Denver a couple years ago? Von oh, Miller? Uh, yeah, Von the, Miller. the guy was unstoppable. Von Miller. You just knew it was going to happen, right? Three times a game, five times a game. And he did it five times a game and was had a, a sack or a, you know, a rush or whatever. And you're like, you just know what's going to happen. You're like right tackle, left tackle. Like, dude, what are you guys doing? But but that's this move to me is like you're going to get caught by it and it's going to be on a fourth and one or third and ten when we need it. And it's and it's needed, man. Our, our, I think once again, we talk about the culture and building where we see holes. The front six. I mean, it's not brain surgery when you go out in the transfer portal and get six linebackers. Right. Like, you know what you need. I mean, it's the writings on the wall. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm high on this kid only because we just didn't do a lot of, you know, sexy things on the D line last year. Wendell Bryant sexy. was sexy on the D line. He was so sexy. He Shout literally did whatever he wanted. I love Wendell. He did whatever he wanted, man. And he was unstoppable. Yep. Well, our final player, tonight is also sexy and unstoppable 
sexiest um, of them all. You know, a lot, a lot of transfers are like, you know, you know, the, the, we assign grades three stars, four stars, five stars. There is one undoubted five star in this class. No question. Without a doubt. And that is Case and Pfeiffer. Woo! The long snapper out of Cincinnati. Clint, I mean, where do we even get started with this guy? I'll tell you where we get sided, uh, started. This is six foot zero, 220 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. Okay. He's a four star snapper with a five star mullet, and he would have been a Towers legend. I wish he was there back in our day. This guy is going to be a fan favorite. He's going to be a sorority favorite, and this guy can throw the ball between his legs. He is going to leave Madison as a legend. Okay. Five-star mullets are hard to come by on four-star players. You don't see it often, okay? Four-star coming out, but yeah, he's played, uh, I think he played in all 13 games this past year, uh, snapped on he's all 45. three-year starter, baby. Yeah, like the dude, uh, he snapped to, uh, I believe, like a consensus, maybe an All-American punter, um, you know, a, an all-conference kicker. This guy knows how to get the ball between his legs. He knows how to make some flair. He's going to be known on campus, and I hope to God he still comes in with that mullet because this is a legend in the making. We don't talk about specialists enough, but and specialists who – No, but this guy <laughs> warrants the attention because of the flow, because of the no, and because of the go. I love this guy, Wisconsin legend in the making. I think it's going to be you know, fantastic. I, I, I think it's a perfect fit of player and team culture. And I, I couldn't be more excited. I've never been so excited to get my hands on long snapper film guys. You have no idea when I'm cutting together the, the film for all of these people, do you know how hard it is to find long snapper film? So uh, I want to say, first of all, shout out to you, Kason, for Kaysen. hooking us up with, oh, yeah. with the film. Um, we are going to make sure that you become the legend that you already are. Um, don't, don't take don't what my comment podcast. the wrong way. Don't take my comment the wrong way. I love specialists, but I also don't love that they all are like ripped up with six packs because they go in the weight room while we're doing inside drill and just do do abs all day. <laughs> so I'm a little slighted <laughs> by some of the jacked kickers we've had, but I am really excited, dude. Special teams is the one of the most important facets of the game, and this dude is not going to let us make mistakes, and he's going to run down and make tackles, and the ball's going to be put where it needs to be put. That's all I want from – that's all I want from him. Now, if he wants to drink 20 beers with me at the KK or Wando's, dude, let's well, become legends. Let's do it. <laughs> we should do the Believe podcast. We'll all sit down there. He, he's got to be of age by now. I don't know if he has a spot in Cal. Yeah, he's, been a three year, he's been a three-year starter. I'm assuming he's over 21. So well, and there's two, put a little math. I'm there. not promoting binge drinking, by the way. No, but or drinking, period. I definitely drank 20 beers when I was in – College, I think. A couple lunch boxes. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing worse than a lunch box when, like, even your first through ten, they all taste horrible. Oh god. Mm. Oh, uh, there should be a paid promotion for the uh, by the college club on here. I think the lunch box. I mean, hey, if they if they want to advertise, you can uh, you can hit up the show Believe in Badgers at gmail dot com, um, please, um, or Perkins Media Partners LLC at gmail dot com. <laughs> Either one of them are just fine to contact or the just show. Call me. Hey, Jay Wondersky, call me, bro. I will. Dude, you'll get us cheap, cheap, cheap. Yes, absolutely. I come real cheap. A couple course lights. I will. I, I will do fishbowl here and there. I'll make a fishbowl animation. We can have a who's in the fishbowl this week, and we can really dissect who's in the fishbowl there. We've, we've, we've gone very off topic. See, this is what specialists yes, do. Have. They get you yeah. so excited about everything <laughs> that you so literally excited. go on tangents. I don't even know what yes. to like. Oh, what do I do with my hands? I am that excited about this. Dude. You, you grab a ball and you snap it through your legs real quick. And you there know you what? Go. Nobody knows a thing about the long snapper until they screw up. And this guy's made it three years without screwing up. And I think of uh Cthulhu, who played with us. Dude was physically gifted. Like he was like a six, six defensive lineman. I played against him in high school too. 
you know, he's golfing now living the dream because he played in the NFL for like 10 years, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, there's another reason to be jealous. So uh, shout out to Katula, shout out to the snappers, shout out to the kickers who make field goals. Sorry, Perko. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah that specialist was love. Got to have it. Yeah, you need them. We're going to show the specialist love uh, here. Um, And that is going to end part four of our five-part special. We will be back very soon with part five, the All Linebacker Podcast. Until next time, thank you for tuning in to Believe in Badgers on the Believe Network, presented by betonline.ag and Oak Ridge Wealth Management. And until next time, on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. Get in that.